Welcome, Mr. Hyatt here, and this video will discuss calculating the equilibrium constant. So notice on the screen I've got a definition of KEQ. It's a number that represents both the concentration of the products and the reactants uh, in a reversible reaction. So notice the, the base set up here. We're going to have our concentration of our products divided by our concentration of our reactants. So if you think about what that means, if you've got a really big number, let me flip back to that. If we've got a really big number here, uh, for our KEQ, that means that our product's concentration was bigger than our reactant's concentration. So that tells you about the direction of the reversible reaction. It's going to favor the products. If we have a really small KEQ, that's going to mean our reactants were bigger. We were dividing by a bigger number, so the reactants are going to be favored. That's what that slide talks about. So uh, we're going to write and balance the reaction. So uh, you know we're going to need to include states of matter. That's going to be really important, much like it was with net ionic equations. Uh, we're we're going to have to pay attention to things that are not aqueous. Um, notice that any solids or liquids are left out because their concentration doesn't change. They're pure. Pure water is pure water. Um, something that's aqueous, we can change the concentration or the concentration of something aqueous changes throughout the course of a reaction. So I uh, wanted to talk through an example. Uh, here in this reaction, uh, we've got two molecules of water breaking down into uh, water, I'm sorry, hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. Notice when we're writing the KEQ equation, we leave out the denominator because we have only a liquid. Our gases can change concentrations because they can be compressed and things like that. Uh, our liquids cannot change concentration because they're pure substances. So our KEQ expression for this decomposition reaction would be the concentration of oxygen times the concentration of hydrogen squared. Let me go back a slide. Notice here uh, on number two, I took the product and I multiply it or I take it to the power of the coefficient. Uh, look at my notes that I gave you. Um, I called it the student notes for this uh, video. The sub should have it uh, if you haven't received it yet. I tried to draw some arrows on my notes and make this a little bit more clear, uh, but this really is the key. So here, notice I had a 2 before my hydrogen, so I had to square my concentration of hydrogen. I don't have any coefficients before my oxygen, so I have no exponents. So that's the basis for calculating KEQ. There's a related K that's called KSP uh, that you'll come across in the textbook, or maybe you've come across it in AP Classroom already. Um, that's going to be similar, but slightly different. So I think that's enough for you to dive in and start calculating KEQ. Uh, make sure you see that I posted the answer key for uh, the, the worksheet that I've got you working on today, uh, and the physical copy uh, is up front with the sub. Um, but I thought maybe you'd want to have a digital copy and not pester the sub with that uh, information. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. I'm at a conference today, so I should be able to step away and answer emails if I need to. Um, so, yeah, good luck. Let me know if you have questions.